learners in this video we are going to talk about field of questions of an integral domain basically we are going to take an integral domain corresponding to that integral domain we are going to construct a field and what is the definition of an integral domain integral domain is a commutative ring with identities such that doesn't have any zero divisor zero divisor what is the definition of zero divisor if a is a zero divisor then a should not be equal to zero and there exists another non zero element b not equal to zero so that is if b is a non zero element such that ab is equal to zero ab is equal to ba is equal to zero that is the definition of a of a being a zero divisor here in integral domain we won't be having any zero divisor that is whenever ab is equal to zero we have either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0 for example z comma plus comma dot is an integral domain and uh, in an integral domain an element may have inverse or may not have an inverse the definition of an integral domain does not guarantee us the existence of multiplicative inverses that is inverse with respect to second operation for example in z consider 2 z is an integral domain but consider 2 with respect to multiplication the inverse of 2 is 1 by 2 but 1 by 2 is not there in z therefore 2 does not have multiplicative inverse in z though z is an integral domain which means as integral domain need not be a field we have already learned that any field is an integral domain but the converse is not true that is uh, uh, only finite integral domain will be a field and uh, so what we are going to do here is uh, uh, since in an integral domain integral domain will not be a field or may not be a field we are going to construct a field for a given integral domain the d need not be a field but with the help of d we are going to construct a field f that contains the set or contains the integral domain d okay this is what we are going to do here for that, I am going to first take an integral domain. I am going to name that integral domain as D. Let D be an integral domain. In the first step, I am going to construct a set S. And uh, we will be given with this set. This D, all the elements that we will be know, knowing. And uh, with the help of D, we are going to construct S. And S is a selection of all elements of the ordered by A, comma B. But the first element A and the second element B will be from the d d is given d will be given to us and we have to make sure that this b is not equal to at zero that is b is not equal to additive identity and uh, we are going to think this ordered pair as a quotient a by b uh, and then after constructing this set what we are going to do is we are going to define a relation on this set s yes. and uh, we are going to define it like okay so this relation we are defining on s and uh, all the elements of s will be of the form a comma b ordered pair right a comma b and c comma d so if we take two elements uh, from s that they will be of the form a comma b c comma d and you have to make sure b is not zero and d is non zero and i'm going to define a relation on uh, s that is a and b a comma b is related to c comma d if and only if a d is equal to b c Basically, till this step, I had an integral domain. For with the help of an integral domain, I have constructed a set called S. And upon the set I have constructed, I defined the relation. And now I'm going to prove the relation that I have defined is an equivalence relation. In order that a relation has to be an equivalence relation, it has to be reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Okay, for that first I'm going to take an uh, ordered pair A comma B in S. And since D is an integral domain, AB is same as BA. Right? Therefore, A comma B is related to A comma B. In order that A comma B is related to A comma B, the first element, look at the relation that we have defined. A, B. Right? That should be equal to BC. The first element and the last element. That, uh, should be, uh, that is multiplication of that should be equal to BC. So here also this is a b is equal to b a and uh, therefore this relation is reflexive 
and the next one we are going to prove this relation is symmetric for symmetric i'm going to take uh, a and a comma b is related to c comma d i should be proving c comma d is related to a comma b and uh, since d is an integral domain d is commutative and uh, therefore ad is equal to da similarly bc is also equal to cb therefore da is equal to ad is equal to bc is equal to cb so here we can compare and write da is equal to cb that is c comma d is related to a comma b in order that c comma d is related to a comma b it should, we have to know that cb should be equal to da that is what we have here therefore the relation that we defined is symmetric the left one is transitivity we have to prove that the relation that we have defined is transitive for that i'm going to take a b is related to c comma d and c comma d is related to e comma f since a comma b is related to c comma d we have a d is equal to b c and then we also have c f is equal to d e and uh, we are going to discuss this in two cases there are only two possibilities for c c can be either zero or c cannot be zero that is c there are only possibilities two possibilities for c c is either zero or c is non zero right this is x cos 2 so what will happen if c is equal to zero if c is equal to zero then bc will be equal to zero therefore ad is also zero and cf will be equal to zero therefore d is also zero and a comma a and d d and e are all the elements of uh, d capital d where d is an integral domain and uh, here a comma b c comma d is there in yes no therefore this uh, b is not equal to zero similarly d is not equal to zero therefore here d is not equal to zero but the product of ad gives me zero since d is an integral domain at least one of them should be zero since d not equal to zero a has to be zero similarly e has to be zero okay so if a has to be zero then af is equal to zero if e has to be zero b is equal to zero in this scenario we have got af is equal to b that is ab is related to ef and we have to consider the other case also right the other case is what happens if c not equal to zero if c not equal to zero and uh, already we have this what we had we have ad is equal to bc and cf is equal to de and what uh, actually i have multiplied that is ad cf is equal to bc de that is what i have written here and uh, also okay fine okay so all elements a d c f are all in d that is capital g d being an integral domain and integral domain is basically commutative ring therefore uh, we can change the order and uh, i can write this a d c f as i can write this as a f d c right and then uh, this also i can write as b e and then uh, d c and c is not equal to 0 therefore by using uh, cancellation la i can cancel uh, c's and then d is also non zero because uh, a comma b and c comma d are an element of s in s the second element should not be equal to 0 therefore d is also non zero therefore we have got af is equal to b so what do we mean by af is equal to b af is equal to b means a comma b is related to c comma sorry e comma f therefore the relation is transitive in either case whether c c is equal to 0 or c not equal to 0 in either case we have got the relation is transitive altogether the relation that we have defined is an equivalence relation so what is the first step we are given with an integral domain and for we know that integral domain may, may not be a field right therefore we are going to construct a field from an integral domain 
for that we have constructed a set called s and um, we made sure in s the b is not equal to 0 and we are going to think this s as a quotient a, a divided by b and then upon s on s we have defined the relation and we proved that relation that we defined as an equivalence equivalence relation now what is the benefit of having equivalence relation on a set partitioning right that is a equivalence relation will give us equivalence classes or it partitions the entire set and uh, therefore here also we are going to consider the equivalence class and what are we going to do is uh, if a comma b the element a comma b is belong to a particular equivalence class then we are going to denote that equivalence class by a by b a by b for example if a comma b is related to c comma d right if a comma b is related to c comma d then both a comma b and c comma d will be there in the same equivalence class because they are they two are related to each other and uh, will be for example if this is the equivalence class that contains a comma b and c comma d the same equivalence class i'm going to call as a by b as well as we can call the same thing as c by d right okay so that is how we are going to name a particular equivalence class and then uh, we are going to construct a set called f and uh, f will basically contains all the equivalence classes that is what we mean by f is equal to a by b where a comma b belongs to s so now we are going to prove we are going to define multiplication and addition or the first operation second operation on f so how are we going to apply addition here if you take two elements a by b and c by d in f a by b plus c by d is equal to a d plus b c divided by b d a by b um, and multiplied by c by d is equal to a c by b d this is how we are defining our addition and our multiplication you can see it here i already told you to think a comma a comma b as a quotient a by b right so here you can see the same kind of similar kind of an operation only we have defined and whenever we are defining a new operation we have to make sure the function or the operation that we define is a well defined operation and uh, here uh, we also have to make sure this bd is non zero and because the denominator can never be zero so since the second element b is not equal to zero and second element d is not equal to zero there is no possibility of having bd is equal to zero because d happens to be an integral domain therefore uh, b is non zero d is non zero therefore multiplication of two non zero elements in an integral domain will never give us zero therefore uh, this bd is non zero right therefore ad plus bc divided by bd will be an element of f and ac divided by bd will be an element of f so if we have any doubt here let me know i will just uh, make it clear to you and then so okay fine i as i told you we have defined our own addition multiplication and uh, the, we have to make sure the addition and multiplication that we defined is well defined before proceeding with the operations and uh, so for that i have taken on element from the equivalence class this a by b is an equivalence class you have to understand a by b is an equivalence class basically it will contain so many elements that are related to each other similarly c comma d is an equivalence class it will contains a collection of elements of s that are related to each other so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one uh, element from one equivalence class and another element from another equivalence class and uh, since uh, a1 b1 belong to a, a divided by b we know that a1 b1 is related to ab and then c1 d1 is related to cd that is a1 b d d1 is equal to b1 a d d1 and c1 d b b1 is equal to d1 c b b1 and uh, from there uh, uh, you can we can easily prove ad plus bc divided by bd is equal to a1 d1 plus b1 c1 divided by b1 d1 that is a by b plus c by d is equal to a1 by b1 plus c1 by d1 that uh, the, what do we mean by here so a comma b is related to a1 comma b1 c comma d is related to c1 comma d1 
so if that is the case the addition is also equivalent equal if addition is well defined similarly we have to prove for multiplication that is a by b dot c by d is equal to a1 by b1 dot c1 by d1 okay a similar thing here. we already have this one therefore ac is comma b is related to a1c b1 d1 that is a by b dot c by d is equal to a1 by b1 dot c1 by d1 therefore the multiplication and addition that we have defined or well defined so far we have defined a set called s and upon s we defined an equivalence relation a relation and then we proved it is an equivalence relation and equivalence relation will divide s into equivalence classes and we denoted equivalence classes by class by a by b and with the help of equivalence class we constructed a set called f and we had defined the two operations addition multiplication on f we proved the operation that we have defined as a well defined operations and in the next step we are going to prove the set f under the operation that we define forms a field okay so the definition of field says uh, it has to be an uh, additive with respect to first operation it has to be an abelian group with respect to second operation also it has to be an abelian group and it has to satisfy distributivity that is a field is a commutative ring with identity in which every non zero element has a multiplicative inverse so it will be very easy for us to prove f under addition multiplication will definitely satisfy commutativity and associativity we can it can be proved using the commutativity and associativity conditions of the integral domain d since d satisfies commutativity and associativity f will also satisfy the same thing and now consider 0 by 1 0 by 1 0 by 1 is an equivalence uh, class basically right so what will happen if you add 0 by 1 with any other element a by b plus 0 by 1 according to the definition it is equal to again a by b similarly b a by 0 by 1 plus a by b is again a by b therefore 0 by 1 is the additive identity and uh, minus a by b is the additive inverse and therefore altogether it will be an abelian group with respect to first operation and uh, with respect to second operation one will be the multiplicative identity that is one can be written as 1 by 1 uh, that is the multiplicative identity of f and consider a by b that is not equal to 0 in f that is a non zero element and uh, we have to prove that right every ring uh, is an uh, a field is a commutative ring with identity in which every non zero element has a multiplicative inverse in other words with respect to first operation it is an abelian group with respect to second operation uh, uh, we have to consider the non zero elements it has to be again an abelian group and then uh, it will satisfy distributivity with respect to the two operations so i have taken a non zero element in f if a by b is a non zero element then of course a is not equal to zero because what is a zero element in f zero element is a in f is 0 by 1 right so for this uh, has to not 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 equal to zero and hence b by a is the inverse of a by b multiplicative inverse also exists because a by b multiplied by b by a will be equal to 1 by 1 according to the multiplication that we have defined and uh, therefore b by a is the inverse of a by b therefore inverse exists for every non zero element now coming to the distributivity we are going to consider a by b multiplied by c by d plus e, e by f that is a by b cf plus d divided by df that is acf plus ade divided by bdf that is uh, acfb plus adeb divided by bdf that is uh, ac divided by bd plus ae divided by bf that is a by b c by d plus a by b e by f therefore all together we, uh, we it satisfies uh, distributivity also we can tell uh, we can prove the other distributive law therefore all together it is a field this is uh, else uh, this is first i'm applying this uh, addition operation we should not tell this as an lcm 
because uh, all this a by b are equivalence classes we have defined our own addition in the same in this way that is why we are having this and after uh, we have there is a multiplication operation therefore we have to define we have to apply the multiplication operation that we have defined and uh, we can notice this multiplication and addition that we have defined it coincide with the quotient set of all or rational numbers and uh, okay fine so right now what do we have we have a field so basically we have constructed a field from the integral domain d and now i'm going to tell we can embed this field in an integral domain that is i can define a map d to f such that this f will be an isomorphism of d onto f of d f of d will be there in f i can embed the integral domain in the f the field that we have constructed that is what we are going to prove and i am going to define my function f of a to be equal to a by 1 and a is an element of d and a by 1 is basically an element of f and a by 1 happens to be an equivalence class right and uh, i have taken two elements in d consider f of a plus b f of a plus b is according to the definition this is a plus b divided by 1 and what is this this is a by 1 plus b by 1 that is equal to f of a plus f of b and f of ab is what a by b ab by 1 this is again a by 1 do multiplied by b by 1 this is f of a is m, uh, multiplied by f of b and uh, therefore uh, if satisfies uh, the conditions for uh, homomorphism and now what i am going to do is uh, we are going to prove it is 1 1 so If you consider f of a is equal to f of b, then that implies a by one is equal to b by one. What do we mean by a by one? A by one is an equivalence class. B by one is an equivalence class that containing b comma one that contains b comma one. A by one is an equivalence class that contains a comma one. B by one is an equivalence class that contains b by one. These since these two are equal, a comma one is basically related to B comma one. That is, a into one is equal to one into b, which means a is equal to b. So whenever we have f of a is equal to f of b, we have a is equal to b. So now you have f is an one one, and f is an uh, homomorphism. And uh, what we are going to do is, uh, we for on to condition, we one we are taking the only this set. No, f of d only we are taking. We are not taking the entire uh, f. We are taking f of d. F of d is just the range. range of d therefore it f will basically it will definitely be on to altogether f is a bijective homomorphism which means f is an isomorphism uh, okay so far what have we done we have uh, developed or we have constructed a field called f and uh, on uh, sorry with an f we can we actually embedded d therefore from an integral domain we have constructed a field that is field from an integral domain and basically when you look this field this has uh, uh, we can think this elements of uh, yes to be quotients from there only we are uh, we have defined our f therefore we are going to call this field that we have developed as field of quotients of an integral domain now you may wonder okay fine we had an integral domain in our hand and uh, we have constructed a field and where we can embed this integral domain so the number actually the other question arises we can also construct other fields that contains this integral domain right there is a possibility we can construct other fields that contain the integral domain not in the same way that we have constructed but whatever be the other fields that contains d we are going to tell the fields that we have constructed is the smallest field that is the field of quotients f that is the smallest field containing d so in order to tell that if you have any other field contain d then i have to tell that field that i have considered should contains a subfield isomorphic to f that is if f dash contains a subfield f subfield that is isomorphic to f then there are only two possibilities right that is f dash is either equal to f or f is the subset of f dash that is f will be smaller f dash will be larger that is how i'm going to prove so i'm going to take let f dash be any uh, uh, be a field containing d 
okay so i'm going to take two elements from d i'm going to uh, make sure the b is not equal to 0 okay so how this a comma b is there in f dash we have taken f dash is a field containing d therefore if a comma b or an element of d then automatically a comma b will be an element of f dash right that is how a comma b is an element of f dash since f dash is a field inverse x is for non zero element since we made sure b not equal to zero inverse x is for b that is b inverse x is and it is closed under second operation that is multiplication therefore a b inverse will be there in f dash and i'm going to define a function from f to f dash f la, uh, in f we have all the elements of the form a by b therefore f of a by b is equal to a b inverse this is how i'm going to define and i'm going to tell this f that we have defined as a well defined because whenever we have defining a new operation or a new function we have to make sure that the operation that we have defined is well defined and uh, okay so in order to tell this is well defined i'm going to take two elements that are equal but here we are going to take two elements that are equal into one another that is a1 comma b1 is related to a comma b that is a1 b1 is equal to b1 a and uh, from here shall we tell a1 b1 inverse is equal to a b inverse how we can pre we can post multiply by b1 inverse all right and uh, pre multiply and post multiply because uh, bo both we can do here and interchange because d happens to be an integral domain and integral domain is commutative and what we have is a1 b1 inverse is equal to ab inverse what is a1 b1 inverse the a1 b1 inverse is f of a1 comma b1 what is ab inverse that is f of a comma b whenever we have two elements or later the corresponding images are also equal therefore f is well defined and uh, we right now told the function we defined the function and we told that the function that we have defined is well defined and next i'm going to check whether my function is 1 1 And for one one, I have uh, taken let uh, f of a comma b is equal to f of c comma d, and f of a comma b is a b inverse, and f of c comma d is c d inverse. That implies a d is equal to b c. That is a by b is equal to c by d. That uh, f of a by b is equal to f of c by d implies a by b is equal to c by d. Therefore, f is one one. And uh, right now, I'm going to consider one second. I'm going to consider two elements a by b, c by d in F, and this is f of a by b plus a c by d. If you consider this is f of a d plus b c by b uh, b d according to the definition of F, this is a d plus b c b d inverse. Okay, fine. This this is a d plus b c plus b d inverse. B d inverse is d inverse b inverse. That is a b inverse plus c d inverse. That is f of a by b plus f of c by d. And similarly, we can also prove f of a by b dot c by d is equal to f of a by b dot f of c by d. Therefore, f is a homomorphism. Okay, now we have told we have defined a function from f to f dash, and uh, we have told the function that we have defined is well defined, and we told this f is a one one. We also told f satisfies the condition for homomorphism. We haven't touched on to because. we are not going to tell f is isomorphic to f dash what we are going to do is we are going to tell f is isomorphic to f of f right whenever we tell f of f that is range on to will automatically holds true and what is f of f f of f will definitely be a subset of f dash it is either equal to f dash or a proper subset of f dash and uh, therefore the f that we have defined satisfies all the criteria for isomorphism for f is an isomorphism that is f can be isomorphically embedded in f dash f in within f dash we can embed f which means f is smaller or equal to f dash which means f is the smallest field containing d that is the field of quotient that we have constructed is the smallest field Okay, that's it uh, for today's this video. Okay, we shall uh, recollect.
the first step is we had d integral domain and for d i want to construct a field why do i want to construct a field because i know that d may not be a field therefore i am going to construct a field from d and i have constructed uh, execute executed the construction successfully how with from d i have constructed a set called s and on s i have defined the relation and i proved the relation that i have defined is an equivalence relation and once you have equivalence relation it will uh, have e uh, split the entire set or partition the entire set into equivalence classes and uh, with the help of equivalence classes i have constructed a set called f and i define two operations addition and multiplication in my own way and i proved that f with respect to two operations satisfies all the conditions for a field until this we have developed a field from an integral domain and after that we told that the field that we have constructed contains d or uh, we can tell uh, it is isomorphically we can embed uh, this uh, d isomorphically into the field that we have constructed the field that we have